Welcome to the fifth and final section of the R Troubleshooting Solutions video series. This section is all about discovering ggplot2. In this section, we're going to tackle four of the most common frustrations our programmers have when drawing plots with ggplot2. First, we'll look at setting the order of values on an axis, such as the order of bars in a bar plot. Then we'll take a look at creating plots with multiple x or y axes. We'll learn how to customize plot legends. And finally, we'll look at some useful tricks for annotating plots with text. This video answers the question, how do I change the order of bars or axis ticks? In this video, you'll learn to change the order of values for a factor variable, how to change the order of values for a character variable, and how to change the direction of a continuous axis. Let's move over into our studio. We'll start by loading the ggplot2 package. ggplot2 comes with a sample data set called diamonds which contains data on nearly 54,000 diamonds. You can see that there's a column in this data frame called cut, which basically describes the quality of the diamond. Is it ideal, premium, good, or so on? The tibble heading for this data frame tells us that this column is of the type ORD, O-R-D, which is short for ordered. If you haven't encountered an ordered object before, it's just a subtype of factor in which the factor levels have a specified order. We can satisfy ourselves that this column is just a factor with the is.factor function. The method we're about to use works exactly the same for an ordered or unordered factor. Let's use ggplot2 to draw a bar plot of the number of each cut of diamond in the data set. Let's take a look at the labels on the x axis of our plot. How are they ordered? They don't appear to be in alphabetical order, because then very good would be at the end. In fact, it looks like they're ordered by the quality of the cut, from the lowest quality, fair, up to the highest quality, ideal. How does ggplot2 know the order of quality of diamond cuts? The answer, of course, is that it doesn't. It takes this order from the factor levels of the cut column. Let's suppose that we want the bars to appear in alphabetical order, rather than in order of the quality of the cut. To do this, we simply need to reorder the levels of the cut factor in the diamond data frame. There are a couple of ways to do this but the most straightforward and explicit is to use the factor function with the levels argument. If we check with the levels function again, we can see that the levels are now in alphabetical order. Let's see what happens when we redraw the plot. Excellent. The bars are now in our preferred alphabetical order. Now let's consider a slightly more difficult situation. Let's replace the cut column with a character vector instead of a factor. As you would know, a character vector does not have specified levels like a factor does. So what happens when we try to plot this variable now? ggplot will automatically sort the values into alphabetical order. This is fine, but it doesn't leave us with an obvious way to reorder the values if we want to. One option is to change the column back into a factor, with the levels set in the order that we want. This would work, but there are situations where it would be inconvenient to change an entire data frame column just to modify the appearance of a plot. What we can do in this situation is to specify the order of the x-axis values with an additional plot layer, scale underscore x underscore discrete. This layer takes an argument called limits, which can be used to set the order of values on the x-axis. Let's use it to put the values back into order of quality. Of course, if you have a discrete y-axis, scale underscore y underscore discrete can be used to reorder that axis as well. A scaling layer with a limits argument will always override the order of a factor variable, so it's a good way to ensure that a plot has a consistent appearance if you're unsure of what the input values will be. Now let's turn to continuous scales. Let's draw a scatter plot of the carat weight of the diamonds against their price. Unsurprisingly, it looks like larger diamonds tend to be more expensive. Now, unlike a discrete scale such as the bar plot in the previous example, there isn't much point to reordering at continuous scale, such as carrot or price. Sometimes, however, you might want to reverse the order of the scale. Once again, there are a couple of ways to do this, but one of the most straightforward is to add a scale underscore x underscore reverse, or scale underscore y underscore reverse layer to the plot. Let's add scale underscore x underscore reverse to reverse the x-axis only. And as you can see, the order of the x-axis scale has been reversed. There are a large number of useful transformation functions for continuous scales that you can read about in the continuous underscore scale help topic. 
They're accessible using the trans argument.